Who are my top 10 male solo artists? Ahoy hoy everybody and welcome to another video where I give you a top 10 and this is my top 10 male solo artists. Some of these artists have found fame in bands but it's their solo work I'm talking about here that I'm a fan of. Uh, the order on this isn't quite as strict as it is or, or as it was rather on my group's ranking which you, hopefully you saw recently um, although that wasn't rigid. Um, but I'd say anything from, well, anything from three down really could be in any order, depending on what I've been listening to. Um, but yeah, these are, I'm quite happy to say, are my top ten. Um, and at number ten, we have Alan Price. This is his wonderful Between Today and Yesterday album, which I highly recommend. So I discovered Alan, went to... Um, a gig. We went to see the Manfreds, who are Manfred Man without Manfred Man, um, on one of their many tours. And they always have special guests. And their special guests on this tour were Chris Farlow, who was excellent. Um, ah, what's his name? Did got to get you in my life. Cliff Bennett of Rebel Rousers fame, and Alan Price. And Alan Price stole the show. He came on, just him, sat at his keyboard. And his 20-minute set probably only had three or four songs in it. And the rest of it was just him telling stories, cracking jokes. And I absolutely loved it. Um, so I almost instantly went out and bought a best of from him on CD. And gradually started getting his albums on CD. Then... We went to see him live for solo show, well, his own show, he had a band with him. Um, and again, it was, you know, a two hour set with probably about an hour's worth of songs, but he's just so funny, you don't mind. Um, saw him again live and he did a, a very similar set, although he had Zoot Money with him this time. And told many of the same stories, but they were still hilarious. And I've just fallen in love with him and his music. Um, some of it is a bit cheesy, but I don't mind cheese. But certainly around this period, between today and yesterday, his Oh Lucky Man soundtrack, he was a master songwriter. And of course, there's his work with the animals as well. But for his solo work, number 10, Alan Price. Number nine, we have Harry Nielsen. Uh, I had Coconut on the Reservoir Dogs soundtrack, which I loved. I was obviously aware of Everybody's Talking and Without You. That was probably as far as my Nielsen knowledge went. But I kept hearing him being talked about. You know, obviously, it's a famous quote from the Beatles. You know, their favourite American band is Harry Nielsen. Or Nielsen. Um, and I just sort of, you know, was intrigued. And then RCA released the big CD box set of all his RCA albums on CD. With loads of bonus stuff and really good set. And I picked that up at a decent price, listened to it all, and that was it. I was hooked. So I've now got most of his albums on vinyl as well. Not all of them, but most of them. And absolutely love him. It's not all great. He went through a very dodgy period in the 70s where his voice was shot through all the drinking and cigarettes and whatever else. Um, his uh, Little Touch of Smilson in the Night, his covers album... I could do without, although he's, it's very good. I don't mind, you know, he does lots of covers on his albums, but it's, they're always interspersed with his own songs. And his own songs are so good, I want them on a, a Nielsen album. Um, this is his first album. First or second, but I think it's his first. Um, and this is this is a favourite. Uh, Cuddly Toy, which was a hit for the Monkeys, he wrote, and that's on here. Uh, 1941's great song, she sang hymns out of tune, his covers of You Can't Do That and She's Leaving Home, his cover of River Deep Mountain High, but it's just the whole vibe of this album I really like, but so many good albums. Number nine, Harry Nielsen. Number eight, 
Miles Davis. Uh, kind of Blue, one of my 10 favourite albums of all time. This is a blue vinyl copy of it, because if you're going to get Kind of Blue, get it on blue vinyl. Um, so I sort of discovered Miles through Prince. Um, he you know, sung his praises a lot. They collaborated a little bit. And, you know, Intrigue made me buy Mellow Miles, which is a CD compilation of largely stuff from this era, but a couple of later tracks as well, a couple from the 80s, his covers of Human Nature and Time After Time. Um, and really liked it, used to listen to that a lot, and so sought out his albums and have picked up a number of them, nowhere near all of them, because there's so many of them. But on CD I've probably got between 10 and 15, and then I'm, I've picked up maybe half a dozen or so on vinyl. This is definitely my favourite Miles era. The, the um, Bill Evans era, but uh, what was I going to say? Uh, but yeah, um, but yeah, there's you know there's lots of other miles that I really like, and as such, he's my number eight. Number seven, Stevie Wonder. Uh, I didn't really get into Stevie until quite recently. I had. This album on CD, really enjoyed it, but that was it, that was all I had. Then I picked up a couple more, I picked up Talking Book and one other, but I can't remember which it was, and I loved those as well, but didn't really explore further. Um, I eventually picked up a compilation, uh, Ones or something, like his version of a Beatles Ones album, quite a few artists sort of did them after that. Um, and enjoyed that, you know, the tracks I didn't already have, I enjoyed his older stuff I, I love. Um, and particularly since I've got into vinyl, started picking up more and more of his albums, sort of expanding it, and they're all really good. This period is exceptional, uh, you know, basically set anything in the 70s. It's amazing, um, this is his masterpiece. He's just a genius. Number seven. Six. <laughs> I've lost count already. Seven. At number six, uh, I know this is a Wings album, and I'm including his Wings material as his solo material, which is possibly cheating a bit, but Paul McCartney. Uh, you know, it's Paul McCartney. I've always been aware of him. You know, I was born in 75. And I don't ever remember Paul McCartney not being a, a thing in my life. Uh, probably the first time I really got into him. You know, I, I knew odd tunes, you know, I knew the Frog Chorus and uh, Ebony and Ivory. And a couple of other odd tracks. My dad had Waterfalls on 7 Inch Single, so I knew that one. And had the lyrics on it, so I used to listen to it reading the lyrics. Um, but then he got the All The Best compilation on cassette and used to play it in the car. This was after him and my mum split, so when he used to pick us up to take us uh, for the weekends. He used to have us most weekends. And very often, you know, on the journey to Chichester where he was living, he'd have that on in the car and I always used to enjoy it. Uh, but I didn't really start buying Paul until again, fairly recently, really, till the Archive series started coming out. I just sort of decided I would get those as they came out, just the normal CD versions, not the extravagant box sets or anything. And I've been getting those, so I don't have all his albums. Uh, this is the only one I have on vinyl, which is why I'm using it to show you. But it, the reason I have it on vinyl is because today, anyway, it is my favourite Paul McCartney album. Um, what sort of made me fall in love with this album was seeing him live, saw him live in Cardiff in, I want to say 2010, but I'm not 100% certain on that. And he played 1985 and Mrs. Vanderbilt, which I'd never heard before in my life. And I loved them both. And I sort of got home and Googled where they were from. I thought, oh, they're from Band on the Run. And that was it. I, the Band on the Run, Band on the Run, Band on the Run release came out. Um, and I was hooked to this album. I forget, I did have Wings Over America on cassette. So I did own some Paul McCartney, I forgot about that. Um, but yeah, number... whatever it is. Paul McCartney. Uh, 
six. Number five is Robbie Williams. Um, this is the only Robbie I have on vinyl, which is why I'm showing his Christmas album. I know, okay? 90% <laughs> of the people watching this video, if not more, don't like Robbie Williams. I appreciate that. I get why people don't like him. But, personally, I love him. I think he is a brilliant entertainer, brilliant songwriter, brilliant singer, um, and one of the best live performers going. I've seen him live 13, 14 times. I never take that fan in me, you know, early incarnation of take that before the initial split in 96. Um, I liked a couple of their songs. I've always liked Babe. Obviously, Back for Good is a classic song, a, a great song. Um, but I always used to like watching them when they were on, you know, live and kicking or whatever, or going live. Because I always liked to see what Robbie was going to get up to because you never knew what he was going to get up to. So I always liked Robbie. Uh, so then he left and Freedom came out, which was nothing. But then the singles started coming out from his debut album and I liked them. And then Let Me Entertain You came out and that was it. I thought, wow, this is an amazing song. I still think Let Me Entertain You is one of his best songs. It is an amazing concert opener. It just gives you a rush of adrenaline to start the gig. Um, since then, bought all his stuff, as I say, seen him live a number of times. I prefer his earlier stuff. Everything up to... <sighs> Intensive Care, probably. I might, it's my sort of favourite era of Robbie. The later albums I do find are a bit samey. But they've all got some really great tracks on them. And he's, as I say, he's always amazing live. Um, but yeah, number five, Robbie Williams. Number four, and I'll be honest, he's only this high at the moment because I'm listening to him a lot. He would probably be a bit lower in the list, usually. But I'm working my way through the box set, which I unboxed on here a couple of months ago. Um, well, am I about nine albums in with a lot more to go? No, eight albums in with... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six more proper albums, two live albums, four discs of bonus material still to go. Ah, uh, and it's Shaky Stevens. Shaky was my first musical love. I don't remember how I fell in love with him and his music. Um, I'm probably, you know, seeing him on telly performing. I don't think it was this old house. This old house was something I sort of came back to. I think it was probably Green Door or You Drive Me Crazy. Um, but that was it. I was hooked. And, you know, for Christmas and birthdays, I would ask for his albums. I uh, have a number of original copies of his albums on vinyl. Uh, his Greatest Hits album is something that I spun a lot. I have quite a few of them on single as well. You know, he was my first ever concert. Again, you know, yes, he's not exactly hip. I mean, it's, you know, his, certainly his early stuff and his later stuff is not what you would sort of imagine from Shaky. I mean, I, I've said this before, but his last album, e Echoes in Time, or I could, yeah, I think it's Echoes in Time, is a country blues album, basically, and I heartily recommend it. His early stuff is very bluesy rock and roll stuff. He's got some really great songs throughout his career. It's just that his 80s stuff, it's with production that can be the issue. Um, but, I mean, on this album, The Bop Won't Stop, which is probably my favourite of his albums, I mean, I listened to this actually about four or five days ago. Um, I would say of the one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve tracks, I would say ten of them would be eight out of ten or above for me. You know, there's some really, really good stuff on here. And he is the best-selling solo artist of the 1980s in the UK. That's something not to be sniffed at. Number four. Shaking Stevens. Number three. It's Duke Special. If you watch my groups run, I said that the lottery winners were the second best support act I've ever seen. Duke Special's the best. I discovered him supporting Divine Comedy. 
uh, at Portsmouth Pyramids on the Absent Friends tour and he came on and it's this weird looking bloke with long ginger dreadlocks, white guy, hardly said anything, this really eccentric bloke on drums um, with all sorts of weird and bizarre percussion instruments surrounding him and he came in, came on and he put, he had an old wind-up gramophone and he put this piece of music or on this gramophone and he started playing. I thought, what the hell's going on here? And then he started and he was awesome. He had everybody in the palm of his hands. His songs were superb. His stagecraft, his musicianship, uh, Temperance, Temperance Society, Chip Bailey, who is who was his drummer, percussionist, etc., was wonderful as well just you know just performed and as I say the songs were great as well and that was it I was hooked um at that stage his first album was about to come out he had some EPs out but his first album hadn't come out yet I bought his debut album um Adventures in Gramophones the day it came out loved it bought everything ever since seen him live a number of times Duke is an Irish singer-songwriter um, like many of the groups of artists I love, he covers many musical styles. He's got a very, you know, folky element to his music. He's got a very, um, vaudeville style to his music. Traditional country, all sorts, but all just sort of his big melting pop, just some straight out pop songs, all sorts. And yeah. They're just all wonderful. Number three, Duke Special. So number two is Mr. Bowie. Uh, this is the Is It Any Wonder EP that came out last year. Yes, last year. Um, I've told my Bowie story in pretty decent depth on my Bowie tag video. So I'm not going to go into how I became a big Bowie fan. But... Again, he's an artist who covers many styles. Great songwriter, great lyricist, by and large. Um, wonderful performer. Lucky enough to see him live twice. Just a genius. Number two, David Bowie. And in the least shocking move ever, my favourite male solo artist of all time is Mr Prince Rogers Nelson. Uh, so again, I have told my Prince story, but I will quickly... I was aware of him growing up. I liked everything I'd heard. Um, you know, all the hit singles, basically. My earliest memory, which I think must have been the re-release in 85, 4... Uh, Brain's Gone Dead, I'm there. But when they re-released 1999, back with Little Red Corvette, on the back of the Purple Rain success. And that it hit number two, I think it was, in the charts. But I remember... I, don't, I can't remember which of those videos it was because they both look very similar but I remember distinctly remember seeing one of those videos on top of the pops and liking that music uh, Raspberry Beret I remember strongly <sighs> Kiss I remember hearing I don't remember the video obviously you know, I've seen it many times since but I don't I haven't got a memory of discovering the Kiss video distinctly remember seeing the Sign of the Times video when that came out because obviously it's such a striking video it was the first proper lyrics video really um and then i joined britannia music club for the first time and when it was cassettes and one of my three cassettes i got for joining i picked purple rain and i stuck it on my walkman sat upstairs at my old house and i started playing it and i got about two thirds of the way through let's go crazy and the guitar solo and I reround it and I listen to it again, reround it, listen to it again, reround it, listen to it again. Ran downstairs and said to mum, listen to this, stuck my earphones on and just played it. And she was like, oh, yeah, that's good, dear. You know, <laughs> so I went back and listened to the whole album, listened to it over and over again. And that was it. I was hooked. Uh, gradually, because I was still only 11. When would it have been? 12, probably. When I got that, it was around 87, start of 88. Um gradually went back because obviously money wasn't free-flowing at the time 
and got his albums on cassettes. Then I won the Love Symbol album and the News of the World competition on CD before I had a CD player. Um, but when I went to university, I bought a CD Ghetto Blaster and that was the only CD I had. So I played that repeatedly and as I gradually bought more and more. Um, but I'd, by that time, I'd really seen him live. Saw him live in 92 on the Diamonds and Pearls tour. But yeah, he is my favourite artist. Why is he my favourite artist? Because he's a genius. Um, you name a musical style, he has done it. He's, he masters every instrument he plays. His guitar work is amazing. His piano work is amazing. His drumming is amazing. His um, bass work, bass playing is amazing. He... His style is amazing. Um, just the way he can take any type of song and make it work. I say it's just wow. Most of his work, only he could perform. The number of songs I listen to, and I think nobody else sounds like this, even if, you know, the actual melody or something might be derivative of Parliament or... Well, you know, anybody else, Beatles or whoever, the production, the instrumentation, nine times out of ten could only be Prince. Um, he has released 30-something albums. There is not a single track on any of them I do not like, and I would say 95% of them I love. Uh, in all his career, he has only released one song that was shit. That is Purple and Gold, which was a download-only track he released um, for the... Was it for the Vikings or was it for the baseball team? One of the Minnesota sports teams. Um, it was sort of a an anthem for them. And it was terrible. It really was bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've sung Prince's praises many a time. I don't think there's many people out there who don't like at least one Prince song. Even if I don't like him in general, I'm sure they've tapped their toes to kiss or woo-wooed along to Purple Rain, you know, or coughed at the start of a 12-inch mix of Raspberry Beret, maybe not that, but I'm sure, you know, I've, even if they don't know it's a Prince song, you know, they might lo love Nothing Compares to You not knowing it's a Prince song, they might love Shaka Khan's I Feel For You not knowing it's a Prince song, they m might love Manic Monday not knowing it's a Prince song. And many others that have been covered and been hits. My number one artist, male solo artist and my number one artist of all time, Prince. So that's it. That's my ten favourite male solo artists. As I say, you know, Prince is number one. But anybody, really, well, Bowie's number two. But anybody between three and ten, their positions will fluctuate depending on how much I've listened to him lately, which is, as I say, why Shaky's so high. You know, another time Nielsen might be higher, or... Uh, I for, now I've forgotten absolutely everybody who I include. Oh, but, uh, Robbie often will be higher. Um, but yeah, for, for today, for, that is the top ten in that order. Um, so I've done the groups, done the male solo artists, that just leaves the female solo artists, um, which I'm about to record. Thank you for watching, like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you in another video. Thanks, bye.